What's up, everybody? It's Gaming Diva here, and welcome back to another episode of Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. Now, in this episode, we're heading over to the school to meet Mr. Vega, who is Amanda's teacher, so let's just jump right in. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I feel pretty haggard after not brushing my teeth or showering, but hopefully nobody will notice. Wait, right before we left, he said that he showered, so... What? <laughs> I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing by his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily aligned eyes. Whoa. Okay, he's a student, so he's definitely not going to be one of the daddies. Maybe like a kid or something? I don't know. Okay. <sighs> Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Oh, this guy's such a dick. Okay. Okay, wise guy. Are you going to help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. You can't miss them. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth set me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Garrett Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of a classroom next to his locker. Mm -hmm. Lucian? Lucian? Huh. Don't you have third period to get to? I like that name. <sighs> Fine, Mr. Oh. Vega. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. Asshole. <laughs> we are not cool. Mm -hmm. You must be Diva. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get mm -hmm. stuck in this. <laughs> Alright, where were we? Now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher mm -hmm. in the Rye? Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where, the, where he blows into the crook of his elbow mm -hmm. and makes a fart noise. Oh my god. Kids are- oh, okay. The whole class erupts in laughter. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please oh. sit down. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell rings for the end of the period, and the students immediately get up and make break Sweet for the door. Sweet Manchego! <laughs> Sweet Manchego! Okay. Remember to do the reading and answer response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Oh. Nobody's listening. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Please call me Hugo. <sighs> now, is he going to be one of the dateable people? He kind of seems like he would be, so... I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's ve a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going mm -hmm. on? Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing her assignments and has been doing rather poorly on her tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Let's see, we just moved. She's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Hmm. I mean, every teenager has a tendency to bottle things up, so... But we did just move. And we'll go with we just moved. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about oh. it than I was. See if you could talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal, and would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down oh, this no. road... Oh. <laughs> Every time they like voice in, I'm like, huh? Okay. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on any scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me oh. know, Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, oh. Hugo? Yes? They ever catch that rock? Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh! Little hearts! Okay. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. And maybe I can talk to her about what's going oh. on. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. <laughs> so you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive oh. meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. 
Let's see, we can make something at home or we can go to the mall food court. Let's go to the mall, why not? Whatever. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing, singular. Sounds like oh. a deal to me. Now you just gotta buy the most expensive thing you could possibly think of, like a flat screen TV or like a console. <laughs> we drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays the game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but also, sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. And maybe they're cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Huh? Oh no, no. <laughs> what? Never mind. <laughs> Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning what? things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just... I want you to know that you can talk to me about everything. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Um... I heard MRR is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Wait, why... Why would you rub that in? She just didn't get into her art school. Oh. Yep. Oh, are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Mm -hmm. Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so ah. funny? Um, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Awkward silence. Who you texting? Huh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you like Noah? Ah. What? No! Dad! Ugh. I can't believe you would- Ugh. Dad! I mean, jeez. Why would you- She's getting really defensive about this. Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just- He's my friend. Okay. Guys and girls can be friends, he's my mm -hmm. friend. Okay, okay, Jesus. <laughs> jeez. This is going well. Well- Good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns on the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop the mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner? <laughs> Hell yeah. Language, huh? Missy. Heck yeah? Better. Hmm? We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. <laughs> Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you want me to just inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? <laughs> she takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat in the rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. <laughs> but also strangely delicious? We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So... Something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <laughs> Oh hmm. my god, no! <sighs> Which meme? All? All memes? Uh. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Uh. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time the meme gets to you, Dad, all the youths have already done the joke uh. to death. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train. <laughs> <laughs> but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it, and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? <laughs> Dad, please! <laughs> Anyways, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Mm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment. 
I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one where you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one. Oh, that's right. that's great. Just bomb it in a store. Okay. Oh, it's gotta have the music too. Okay. Amanda runs into the store with me tailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still see the outline, kind of. I'm so... proud? Speech. Amanda. Yeah. Speech, 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 speech. All right, I'll do it if uh. you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and McDad had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond, <laughs> dead goth and beyond, okay, to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Uh. Thank you. Amanda has moved. She begins clapping. Slow at first, but faster and faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their head. One of them also starts clapping. Right. I bow my head. Hey! Chain wallets! While Amanda busies herself looking at, brand, at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest for myself. Not much for a dad to look at in Dead Gotham Beyond. Let's see. Pursue band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, or check out the clearance bin for hot deals. I mean, I would probably check out the clearance... Let's... Let's go to the clearance bin, whatever. There's a big cardboard box of marked down items. I'm pretty sure four dollars for purple eyeliner is a good deal, I think. I wonder if it I wonder if I would look good in purple eyeliner. Ugh, I don't know about that. Hell yes I would. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to the bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said the blouse was Victorian-inspired. However, I received it and it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? <laughs> Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I've outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Ooh, he's gonna handwrite a letter? Whatever, dude. The man whistles around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian inspired or Edwardian in this nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in hand. Oh boy, hmm. here it comes. Hey Dad, Tron 5000? Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks! At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops his shirt onto the counter and yeah. grins at the cashier. I love oh. your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. <laughs> I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she's pulling something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home for some quest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, cool. Long haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers is on. <laughs> Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also, they're hunting oh. ghosts. <laughs> also, the trucks are haunted. <laughs> this is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. This show sounds amazing. I would totally watch it. Oh no, the ghost done got control of the truck. I can't steer on them their damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying, you're going to die. That's because we're about to die, you. This is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. <laughs> I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after the disastrous ice road incident. Afterward, I crawl into bed to get a good night's sleep. Oh, we're sleeping again. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never ever let me have five more minutes of sleep, so get up. Fine.
We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda's much better at interpreting tiny, the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a, book a bookcase. <laughs> so, you excited for the cookout today? Oh, excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited or eh. Pretty much that one, the second one. If there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Mm. Yeah, those are bad. What do you mean they're so good? They're just all sugar and just, oh, hurt your mouth so bad. Which means there are more for mm. me. Don't you want to meet some of the people who live in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We'll get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Oh. The social butterfly. Well, we better get ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who showed us to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. I guess we're not as early as we thought. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through the sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. I set her veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Oh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. Oh, and you brought the veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. All those carbon copy kids. And this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Yeah, even more creepy. They stare creepily and say nothing. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Trish. Or Chris? Tr I'm gonna say Trish. Chris. Whatever. And maybe Mary put him in the crib? Oh no, it's the one from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Mm. Joseph pecks around the cheek and she smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Trish to bed? Ah. I'll have to go look for it. What? What? You'll have to... <laughs> Joseph takes a moment to regain oh. his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Diva, and his daughter, Amanda. Mm -hmm. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to attend to. I love her. Nice to, uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. She's like, I just need to go literally anywhere else. I'm gonna, yeah, bye. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. A lot of knowing going on. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread on the table. I pick up some deviled eggs, Amanda grabs a small paper plate, and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad, who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do the pleasantries. Mm. Uh, Dad. Uh, they're going to talk about weather. Aww. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's <laughs> bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. <laughs> Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Oh dang, Robert's here? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit at Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second, all these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Let's see, talk to Robert and Brian, talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig, talk to Joseph and Damien. Hmm. So, I mean, obviously we have the connection with Robert, and Brian seems pretty cool. But then we have Craig, who's the old roommate, and then I'm probably not going to talk to these guys just yet. So, let's go with Robert and Brian. I walk over to Robert and Brian, who are chatting over drinks. Determined not to be weird about what happened that night, I hope Robert feels the same way. Hey, guys. Hey. Diva, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. 
I finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh boy. <laughs> Diva, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, I believe we met briefly. Mm. Hey. Robert takes a long uh. sip of whiskey. Robert robotically extends his hand. I shake it as he stares unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh god, what does it mean? Uh, how's it going? Uh. It's good. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding, taking a long sip. Uh. Great, looks like my friend's becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know. Us dads? Robert has a kid? He has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? Yep. Cool, that's cool. We stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until... We gotta get off this haunted truck! Oh no, the ghost locks the doors. Daisy and Amanda run up to us, thank god. Quick, hit the emergency escape button! But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Ugh, then... Hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but now we'll have to survive this arctic tundra. Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. Wait a second. Are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Yeah! Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially the episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sends a spirit after him. Yeah, such quality reality television. The best quality reality television. Like I said, would totally watch it. Alright, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in the harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over the... Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for the yes. fire. Okay. Oh, Robert just deuced out of there. He's like, bye. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Yeah. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. I turn my attention back to the conversation. But wait, where did Robert go? I skim the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does... Does he not want to talk? Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of my Robert-induced haze. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we went. To we took her to a restaurant. Oh, God. She bit people, too. <laughs> oh, kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to, by law. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Alright, so talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Talk to Joseph and Damien or Burger Time. Well, I feel like we should at least say hi to at least Craig, because, I mean, he's our old roommate, so... Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of their social and political climate of the time and place. And to try and take something like, say, the Rocco period and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which work of art is created. Oh man, they're having a real in-depth conversation. Okay, Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Talk to Craig or listen to Matt and Hugo. Let's talk to Craig, obviously. We don't want to interrupt their intellectual conversation they're having. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems to be a little more attentive to my existence. How'd the resistance training go the other day? Oh. Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader, aren't you, tiny bro? Tiny bro, I love it. Uh, Craig grabs River's arms and waves oh. them around. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful oh. at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. 
<laughs> How are you settling in? Almost done. The new place is perfect. I never get too comfortable. We'll say almost done, because I mean, we have the living room done, so the living room is probably one of the more important parts. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. We did livable through the entirety of college. <laughs> oh, college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that I didn't that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. <laughs> she still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Diva, how are you liking the new neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody is super oh. friendly. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over hey. to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute hey. in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top hey. of his head. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Hmm. Nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Huh. Hey, Diva, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. <laughs> Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually. Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your Whoa. teacher. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize that we were neighbors. Ah. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term <sighs> paper? <laughs> Great seeing you. <laughs> Bye. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. <laughs> she learned that the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did Whoa. my son go? Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Huh? Ernest? Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of the cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Mm. Oh god. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Hey. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants, nearly burning down half the yard. <laughs> In the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then, it spread to my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. <laughs> Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Diva, this is my son, Ernest. Hello? Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep into his pockets. This guy looks like another asshole, too. Okay. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Mm -hmm. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. Are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Um, uh, yeah, good for you. Oh. Can I go now? I'm tired of old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ernest. Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts the earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents me for that. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Mm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Hey. Oh god. <laughs> See that right there? You can't say that. Oh. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be cool oh. dads? I, uh, don't know. Yeah, sounds great. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Oh no. <laughs> As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids, it just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, 
But there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when hey. that happens? Don't let us eat up your time, Diva. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Okay, so... We could either eat burgers or just talk to Joseph and Damien, which we should probably just head on over there. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from Dead Gotham Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. So I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? I feel like this guy sounds sophisticated. Like, okay, hold on. The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements my crimson interior perfectly. It's definitely an interesting choice. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Diva, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical <sighs> eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Gotham Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. <laughs> I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously to be and to be caught up in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Gotham Beyond, I was profoundly frustrated indeed. Huh. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's... okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over at Amanda who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the oh neighborhood. Oh my. Hey Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would describe myself as a twee hipster with some normcore learnings. <laughs> Bats are cool though. <laughs> mm. They're just shouting across the whole barbecue to each other. Ah, mm. pity. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everybody's so friendly and welcoming. <laughs> Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? <laughs> that it would, my dear. I do not believe we have had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch, at your service. Bloodmarch? Is this guy like a- He can't be a vampire, but man, he certainly resembles one. <laughs> Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Where did he get that from? Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. My... You do know how to treat a lady. Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twins appear, and, uh, are they speaking in unison? Uh, hey. Won't you come play with us? Uh, come play with us forever. Guys, enough with the creepy twin stick. We've talked about this. <laughs> Christian and Christy slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of wine. I think I might have taped over the VeggieTales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? Great mother. She's the mother of the year. She takes another sip of her wine. Where's Chris? I'm gonna say Chris. I think it's Chris. We're just gonna go with Chris. Where's Chris? Wasn't he with you? You had him a moment ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. I feel like Joseph and his wife Mary have like a very, oh, we look perfect on the outside, but I fucking hate her guts on the inside. That's exactly what I'm getting from this whole conversation. Mary tips her glass to me. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fifth. I have squeezed four little, sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Chris? That would be great. I'm sure he's fine, Mary. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Oh, it's this kid. Oh, you. You're a jerk. Ah, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Diva yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That is no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie oh. burger? Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. <laughs> Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian area were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Ugh, that sounds disgusting. Dad. That's really interesting, Damien. 
Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know? That's so cool. Wanna see mine? What? What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. Yeah, you can kind of see it right here. My buddy gave me a poke and stick tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian. Oh, no. We'll talk about this later. Um. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Wait, he got 666 tattooed on him and he doesn't know what it means? Um, mm. you might want to look into that. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful though, that number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what he did before preaching. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets the patties on the grill. Flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air, it's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto the patties, perfectly grilling onions on the side, one after another. But the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful oh. technique. You probably didn't know this, Diva, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. He's unbelievable. Nice. Oh no. I tried to get on his level, but I can't catch up. Oh no, stop. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Please stop. Mustard, we keep talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? Make it stop. I've never seen him make a mistake. Hmm. Oh my god. Okay, we need to stop this. It's getting too cheesy. Somebody please. Okay. Please stop. All the children in the party boo the glorious display of puns in yeah. unison. Alright guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Hey. Man, it's so wild that all of us dads live in the hmm. same cul-de-sac. Kind of nice, isn't it? But it feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood oh. a lot. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Hey, why don't you add us all on dad book? Dad book? Oh god. Dad book? <laughs> yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, it's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. Of course, you gotta ask your kid to help you. That's... They'll try to, at least. <laughs> the rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories, drink beer as our kids play in the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmencita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. I mean, they probably did. Alright, you guys. That is going to do it for this episode of Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. Now, in this episode, we met Hugo and we met Damien. And then we went to the barbecue and got to kind of socialize with everyone as a group. So we also did complete chapter one. So I'm wondering if chapter two is where we're going to more like branch out and start to go on dates with these wonderful dads. <laughs> but anyways, I'm super excited to keep on playing this. I'm loving this game so far. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, have a wonderful day. And I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.